express 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta in the form of r cos theta minus alpha. We want to give alpha to three decimal places. Okay, so first of all, expanding out the r cos theta minus alpha, this gives, using the addition formula, r cos theta cos alpha plus r sine theta sine alpha. So notice the similarities. We have cos theta here, cos theta there, and then we have sine theta here, sine theta there. So for these two things to be equal, then that would mean that r cos alpha must equal to 6, and similarly r sine alpha must equal to 8. We can then solve those two things simultaneously, so divide r sine alpha over r cos alpha is equal to 8 over 3. R's cancel, we get tan alpha is 4 over 3. Inverse tan of 4 over 3 gives us 0 0.927. And then to work out what r is, we do the square root of these two numbers squared and added. So 6 squared plus 8 squared. And that gives us 10. So that means for part A, 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta is equal to 10 cos theta minus alpha, where alpha is 0 0.927. And for part B, we have p theta is equal to 4 over 12 plus 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta. And then we're trying to find out the maximum value of p theta. So to do this, let's first rewrite p theta as 4 over 12 plus, and the 6 cos theta plus 8 sine theta becomes 10 cos theta minus 0 0.927. We want to work out the maximum value of what we have here. So to make that fraction as big as possible, we want to make the denominator as small as possible. To make the denominator as small as possible, let's first consider that a cos function so cos theta minus 0 0.927, which is a normal cos graph. It's just shifted to the right by 0 0.927. So the highest and the lowest values of a cos function would be minus 1 and 1. And that's just from a cos graph. So imagine a cos graph looks like this. This is 1. This is minus 1. Again, the shifting to the right doesn't affect the highest and the lowest values. Okay, so if we want to make, again, this fraction as big as possible, we want to make the denominator as small as possible. So we can do that if cos of theta minus 0 0.927 is equal to minus 1. If that's equal to minus 1, so this bit here is minus 1, then we get 12 plus 10 times minus 1, or in other words, 12 minus 10, which would be the smallest possible value the denominator could be. So then p theta would be equal to 4 over 12 minus 10, or 4 over 2, which is 2. So this here is the maximum value. And then for part 2, we're trying to work out the value of theta at which the maximum occurs. So remember that we set cos theta to be equal to, or cos theta minus 0 0.927, we set this equal to minus 1, and when we do that, we end up with the maximum value of p theta. So, if we solve this equation for theta, we end up with the value of theta when the maximum occurs. Our interval before was 0 to 2 pi. That's what we had here. So then, inside our bracket, we have theta minus 0 0.927. So I'll take away 0 0.927 from both of these values. We get minus... 0 0.927 is less than or equal to theta minus 0 0.927. 5.356. And then we can do inverse cos of minus 1. So theta minus 0 0.927. Inverse cos of minus 1 would be pi. And when a cos graph is equal to minus 1, so a cos graph that hasn't been stretched vertically or horizontally, a cos graph is only equal to minus 1 every 2 pi radians. 
So then with this value here, we can add or subtract 2 pi to that to get the values after and before, but none of those will be in this domain. So we stop there. We just add 0 0.927 to that value of pi, and we get 4.07, which would be our final answer. Yeah, there's no requirement on decimal place, so this would be it.